Liana Stark was the third child born to Rickard and Liara Stark in around 266 AC. She had two older brothers, Brandon and Eddard, born in 262 and 263 AC, respectively, and one younger brother, Benjamin, born after 266 AC. Liana was considered a beautiful woman, with a wild beauty by most, but there were others that thought of her as a boyish child. Liana had none of the delicate beauty of Ilya Martell, and compared to Cersei Lannister, it was said that while Liana was a bright torch, she could never compare to Cersei, who was a rising sun. Interestingly, Arya is said to look much like Liana, to the point where in a vision of Liana as a girl, Bran confuses her for Arya. But under her beauty, her brother Ned claimed that there was an iron that not everybody could see, and that she was a wild, stubborn, willful girl with a touch of wolf blood in her, but not as much as her older brother Brandon. Ned remarked that Liana would have carried a sword had their father allowed it. And as a young girl, Liana did in fact duel with her brother Benjen, using broken branches for swords. In one instance, she defeated her brother by slashing him across the thigh causing him to lose his balance and fall into a pool. Benjen shouted until Liana warned him to be quiet or old man might hear them and notify their father. Then, being a good older sister, she knelt and pulled her brother out of the pool. Or she did it to get him to stop shouting. Though we're only aware of this one time she dueled her brother, it is likely she did this more than once. Liana also loved riding horses and was considered a fantastic rider. More than one person has commented on her riding abilities. Lady Dustin claimed that Liana and her brother Brandon were a pair of centaurs. Roose Bolton stated that Liana was half a horse herself, and Harwin compares Arya Stark, Liana's niece, to her and tells Arya her aunt rode like a Northman, which is most definitely a compliment. Besides all that, Liana was also fond of flowers and she loved the scent of winter roses. Liana grew up at Winterfell and seemed to get along with her brothers. She likely spent more time with her youngest brother Benjen, as her brother Brandon was fostered at Barrowton, and her brother Ned at the Vale with John Arryn. While we don't have a lot of information on what exactly Liana was up to as a child, we do know as Ned started splitting his time between the Vale and Winterfell starting at age 16, on one of his trips to Winterfell, he delivered a marriage proposal to his father from his good friend Robert Baratheon, asking to marry Lyanna. Rickard agreed to the proposal, but Lyanna wasn't as thrilled about the arrangement. The night Rickard had promised her hand to Robert, she came to Ned, telling him, Robert will never keep to one bed. I hear he has gotten a child on some girl in the Vale. Ned, having held the baby in his arms, didn't deny it, nor would he lie to his sister. Instead, he assured her that what Robert did before their betrothal was of no matter, and that he was a good man and true who would love her with all his heart. In response to that, Liana had simply smiled and replied, Love is sweet, dearest Ned, but it cannot change a man's nature. Despite her misgivings, the marriage arrangement continued, in 281 AC, Lyanna attended the tourney at Harrenhal with her brothers and Robert Baratheon. At this tourney, Holland Reed was attacked by three squires, each no older than 15. The boys snatched away his spear, shoved him to the ground, and told him he had no place at the tourney. They continued to shove and kick him until Lyanna came upon the scene and roared, That's my father's man you're kicking! Lyanna attacked the squires with a tourney sword, driving the boys off. After they were gone, she took the bruised and bloodied Howland back to where she was stained, clean up his cuts, and bind them with linen. There, she introduced the man to her brothers Brandon, Ned, and Benjen. Then, she invited Howland to the feast with them that night, and given how stubborn she was, Howland couldn't refuse. So, at the feast that night, Howland ended up joining her and her brothers. There, Rhaegar Targaryen played a song on his harp that was so sad, Lyanna began to cry. Her brother Benjen, being a typical brother, teased her about it. So, in retaliation, she poured wine over his head. During the feast, Holland and Lyanna both spotted the squires that had attacked the man earlier. She pointed out the three boys to her brothers, who offered to help Holland get revenge. It is unknown if Holland ever got his revenge, but during the tourney, a mystery knight appeared and defeated the three knights of the squires that had hurt Holland. 
Some believe the mystery knight was Liana, and others Ned or Howland. And I have a whole video on that, so for now, we'll just stick with what we do know. The mystery knight appeared, defeated the three knights, and the squires were taught a bit of humility. But the really juicy part is at the end of the tourney, when Rhaegar Targaryen defeated every opponent and was given the honor of crowning the Queen of Love and Beauty. He shocked everyone when he passed by his wife, Princess Ilya Martell of Dorne, to go before Lyanna, laying a crown of blue winter roses on her lap. According to Ned, that was the moment all smiles died. Lyanna's brother Brandon was outraged, feeling Rhaegar had slighted her honor since she was betrothed to another, and he had to be restrained from confronting the prince. Ned didn't have to be restrained, but he was no more pleased than Brandon. Lyanna's intended, Robert, laughed and said Rhaegar was only paying her her due, but those that knew him said inside he was furious. Despite that uncomfortable moment, all seemed to go well until the next year. Ten leagues from Harrenhal, Rhaegar, traveling with half a dozen of his closest friends and companions, fell upon Lyanna and abducted her. There are many theories on why Rhaegar took Lyanna, and they are also discussed in a separate video, so I won't get too in-depth here. Robert Baratheon claims that Rhaegar kidnapped her and raped her dozens of times. Others, such as Barristan Selmy, believe that Rhaegar loved Lyanna, and still others, such as Cersei Lannister and Viserys Targaryen, believed Rhaegar took Lyanna because he wasn't happy with his wife. Regardless of his reasons, Lyanna's brother Brandon, days from his wedding to Catelyn Tully, soon heard of this abduction and went to King's Landing to make Rhaegar pay. But at King's Landing, Rhaegar nor Lyanna were present. Instead, Aerys II, Rhaegar's father, charged Brandon and Brandon's companions that went with him to King's Landing with treason, commanding the fathers of the boys to answer for their crimes. In the end, Aerys II killed all the boys and their fathers, including Brandon Stark and Rickard Stark. The only boy that escaped death of Brandon's party was Ethan Glover. After killing Lyanna's father and brother, Aerys II commanded Jon Arryn to bring him the heads of Robert Baratheon and Eddard Stark, who were currently in the Vale. Jon Arryn refused and raised his banners. Soon, Jon Arryn, Robert Baratheon, and Eddard Stark were plunged into Robert's rebellion. It is believed during this war, when Rhaegar Targaryen was killed by Robert, that the last thing he whispered was Lyanna's name. After finishing the last battle of the war and lifting the siege on Storm's End, Eddard rode to the Tower of Joy with six other companions, including Howland Reed, somehow hearing that was where his sister was being held. There, Eddard and his companions faced off against three Kingsguard, Sir Arthur Dane, Sir Oswell Went, and Sir Gerald Hightower, who were charged with defending the tower. After a short conversation, Eddard and his companions began fighting with the Kingsguard. During the fighting, Lyanna may have screamed for her brother. Eventually, only Holland and Ned were left alive, and Ned headed into the tower to find his sister. But by the time Ned got to her, she was covered in a bed of blood in a room that smelled of blood and roses. A fever had taken most of her strength, and her voice had been as faint as a whisper. She cried to Ned, Promise me. Promise me, Ned. Ned whispered back, I promise, Leah, I promise. With his promise, the fear went out of her eyes. She smiled and tightly clutched her brother's hand before she gave up her hold on life, and dead, black rose petals spilled from her hand. She was 16 years old at the time of her death in 283 AC. Ned would continue holding her body in silent grief until Holland Reed took her hand from his. Of all the people that died at the Tower of Joy, Lyanna's bones were the only ones Ned returned home, something Ned claimed Lyanna wanted, to rest beside her father and brother. Honoring that wish, he placed her in a tomb beside their father, but he also gave her a statue, even though lords and kings are the only ones that are supposed to have one. After Lyanna's death, she would still affect the people that had known her. Ned would be haunted by his promise to her, and knowing Lyanna was fond of flowers, he would bring them to her grave whenever he could. Robert Baratheon continued to mourn losing her his entire life, even naming at war galley Lady Lyanna. His inability to let go of Lyanna caused considerable strain on his marriage to Cersei Lannister, especially on their wedding night when Robert, drunk, whispered Lyanna's name during their first time having sex. 
Meg Mormont named her youngest daughter Lyanna, but some feel this was done to win the favor of Ned Stark. Even Theon Greyjoy, a man that had never met Lyanna, would have a nightmare involving a feast of the dead at Winterfell that included Lyanna, a slim, sad girl wearing a crown of pale blue roses and a white gown spattered with blood. Lyanna has been the source of many fan theories. Theories I've already discussed, such as why Rhaegar took Lyanna and who was the Mystery Knight, and other theories I'll talk about in future videos. Lyanna Stark, beautiful and willful, and dead before her time. Hit the like button, it helps out a lot. Stark month continues and will probably go until season six of Game of Thrones begins or end the week before then.